Okay, I would like to welcome Ben to come and join me on my park bench, also known as an organ stall, but <laughs> it'll do for our park bench today. Now, some of you, can I give you that? It's on. Some of you will know Ben very, very well, but there are lots of people here that I am very aware, myself included, who don't know Ben at all. So, Ben, many new people. I know you've got connections with the church, um, historically, long way back, but not, not a lot else. So tell us your story. Tell us your links, your connections, and why you're joining me on the park bench. <laughs> well, um, someone came up to me a little bit earlier and said, ah, you must be a freeze. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I actually go back uh, to before I was born, <laughs> in fact, at St. Mark's, and that my uncle was a curate here like you right. back in the 60s oh, wow. <laughs> with David Watson and um, McInnes was his name. Um, anyway, various people. And um, so my grandparents actually bought, when, when my grandfather retired, bought a house and not too far away, his, his criteria for buying the house was it was within a, a, a shooting distance of some marks so that he could come to church here. That's so um, my parents are, are still in that house, and I'm now in Zimbabwe, um, living in Zimbabwe, where uh, I've been for the last 25 years or so. Um, but my father went out to, to Zimbabwe in the early 80s, in fact, when I was a boy, and my uncle went to South Africa, um, so we've sort of become Africans, but this is home. <laughs> Fabulous. So tell us about Zimbabwe. Tell us why you went and what happened when you were there. Well, my wife um, is a farmer's daughter, and uh, we ended up living on the family farm. Uh, we got married in 1994, and um, we've been... We were on the farm right the way through to uh, 2009, um, but we had various problems along the way where um, our president decided that he wanted to give our farm to one of his ministers, and um, there was a long legal battle, and we ended up being abducted and tortured, and our homes being burnt down, and our workers being severely beaten, and, and it was a very, um, a, a real time of, of persecution, which actually carries on to this day in Zimbabwe. I mean, I, I've just come over in the last week, um, but before I, I came, um, we've had a, a real time of persecution with many people being chucked into jail, many people um, being severely tortured by the army and, and police, some shot dead, um, and uh, people literally with, with no food in the jails, no medical attention despite having broken bones and things in the jails um, and, and us trying to look after people and standing in the gap in these kind of situations that, that we're facing and continue to face in, in Zimbabwe. So how, how does that work in re reality? I mean, because, do you, I mean, do you still have your farm or was that given to the minister? I mean, what is yeah. it, you know, how, how does that standing in the gap look yeah. practically? Yeah, well, yeah. as I said, 2009, finally, we, we were moved off the farm. They, they torched our house and they torched some of our workers' houses. And then three days later, they torched my, my parents-in-law's house. And so we finally were, were kind of chased off in right. 2009, we tried to rebuild a couple of the workers' houses, and they they set fire to those as well. So we realised that, you know, although we had um, stuck it out uh, as hard as we could, there was God wanted us in in doing something else, right. uh, standing in the gap continually in Zimbabwe. But we're now in town, right. uh, in Harare, the capital, and. Um, doing what we can for, for justice and, and for righteousness and, and for God's kingdom um, from there. And we're in a much better place in many ways to be able to, to do that now that we're in town and we're not constantly under siege and constantly uh, having uh, persecution right at our doorstep. And 
as a what I mean, I'm I'm a little bit out of touch with Zimbabwe and what's mm. so clearly there's still persecution, clearly there's an awful lot of unrest. Mm. Um, as a, a, a white African in Zimbabwe, I mean, are you safe? Are you, I mean, how, how does it work? Well, in, in town, it's a lot safer than out in the countryside where um, the ruling party and government thugs can, can do what they like to people and no one really hears about it. Right. But in town, you're, you're a lot safer. We're actually right next to one of the embassies. Um, and so uh, there's a lot more um, accountability in town for the kind of things that government does to people. But in the last few weeks or, or the last two months, um, there has been, uh, the army has been let loose literally with AK-47s and, and they've been smashing down people's doors uh, in the high density areas of Harare and uh, hauling people out and, and beating them um, and in sometimes in, in some cases killing people. So it has been, um, you know, it continues to be a very trying time and a time when I think we as the church need to be more and more relevant. Um, and the temptation in these times is to be like everyone else, to be like the world and to be afraid. Yeah. because it is a fearful time. Um, and, and many people in the church are afraid. Um, but Jesus didn't come, us, come to, to give us a spirit of, of fear, and we need to trust that. Um, and we need to not be afraid in these kind of situations because he is more than able to, as we trust him, to take us through uh, and, and, and it's not easy, <laughs> no. uh, but to take us through um, the hard times that we face. And, and wherever we are, whether it's in Gillingham or whether it's in Zimbabwe or, or wherever it is in the world, Jesus said, you know, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have um, overcome the world. And so we need to be overcomers and, and not be afraid and, and stand in the gap um, through whatever comes in, in our lives. That's, that's really fabulous. Thank you. How can we, as a church here mm. in Gillingham, how can we help you? What can we, how can we pray for you? What, what would you like us to do to support you in what you do there? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing is really to pray for the church, pray for Christians in Zimbabwe, that we would um, take God at his word and, and be there uh, in, in standing in the gap, I, I think it's such a relevant theme today for, for what we would like prayer for, that we as Christians would stand in the gap in, in Zimbabwe and be the salt and, and the light that Jesus commands us to be in, in a society that is often very, very dark and, and very, very rotten. Thank you. Let's pray for you now. Father, I just thank you for Ben. I thank you for his family. I thank you that you have carried them through um, some really, really dark and tough times. Father, we thank you that you are their strength, that you are their rock. Uh, and Lord, we know that light dispels darkness. We know that where there is even a flicker of light, it overcomes the dark. And so, Lord, we pray for Ben, we pray for his family, we pray for Christians in Harare, in Zimbabwe, and across the world. We pray, Lord, that you will help them to stand firm, that they will indeed be the light that dispels darkness, that they will be a witness to you and to your goodness and to your grace, that they will be a witness to justice and to truth. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.